up, family? This is Marseille, a.k.a. The Property Pastor here with Kingdom Legacy Builders. I want to thank you for stopping by the channel today. I want to thank you for tuning into today's videos. Today, we're going to be talking all about how do you set up your house to rent out single rooms. Now, we're doing a current, our current series is really all about single room rentals. Um, I own four of these types of properties out of my portfolio. I've got 11 total in my portfolio as of today, but I really started out building my portfolio through single room rentals. And one of the things I love about single rooms is that you can kind of act like a multifamily property uh, and get a lot of the benefits of cash flow, a lot of the benefits of uh, vacancy protection, while at the same time owning a single family house. Now, if your market doesn't have a lot of multifamily that's available, the competition is really high, you can take advantage of renting out individual rooms and make more money that way. Uh, if, if, if you're just getting started in it, you know, your, if you got your first property, uh, you may be house hacking where you rent out of where you live in one room and rent out the other. So if you got a four bedroom house or a three bedroom, you rent, you live in one and rent out the others and basically live rent free. If you want more information about that, check out my video about how to house hack. But again, today we're talking all about how do you set up the end of, how do you set up the house? to be successful with uh, renting out rooms individually. So I wanna thank uh, Miss Paris Williams who actually dropped the question uh, while looking at another video. So if you have questions, make sure you drop them and you may get featured on a future video. So shout out to Paris uh, for her great question and, uh, and, and we're just kind of answering those, some of those questions today. So again, if you got questions, make sure you drop them in the comment section. We'll make sure that we get them answered. But if this is your first time to the channel, Make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel, The Property Pastor. Hey, our mission is to help everyday people like you and me build a lasting legacy for our children and our children's children. So, so today we're going to be talking all about how do you set the house up. So again, make sure that you like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. So let's talk a little bit about the common areas. Now, the common areas are going to include the kitchen. Uh, they may include the, they're going to include bathrooms typically, and then also if you have washer and dryer space. So in these common areas, some practical considerations are going to be things like the refrigerator. You want to make sure that you have a large refrigerator. Now, I don't like to put a really fancy refrigerator with an ice maker in it because those are just things that are going to break. So I typically want to get a nice, large capacity refrigerator. Uh, I usually, usually use the top and bottom type, uh, just your 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 high capacity refrigerator because many people are going to be storing stuff in that refrigerator now over time tenants are going to develop relationships they're going to say hey you buy milk you know i buy eggs and things of that nature but when folks go out to eat and, and and have takeout and all that kind of stuff you want to make sure they got lots of space or you're going to get complaints so if you don't have a lot of a lot of space then folks are typically going to complain that there's not enough room uh, for their stuff. Now, typically what we do with our property management is we kind of work with them to set house rules and tell them, hey, this may be your total shelf, uh, however you guys want to divide that up. But one of the, the one of the practical considerations that you want to make is in the refrigerator. On top of that, one, one other area that I always advise that people not include in, in this type of rental is a garbage disposal. Now, I don't usually like to put garbage disposals in any of my rentals, but especially in a uh, in, in a single room rental, right? If, if you're renting out individual rooms, you don't want to have a garbage disposal because everybody's going to use it. They're going to put all sorts of stuff down in it. Uh, and it's, it's, you're going to be getting maintenance calls left and right over the garbage disposal itself. Another consideration is a washer and dryer. Now, I often put washer and dryers in my units, and I want to tell you what I tend to pay uh, for repairs, for replacement, because they take a total, they take a beating. And I've been back and forth about whether or not to include them, but it's an amenity that I find gives me longer term tenants and allows me to charge a higher price point. So I usually have a washer dryer uh, in, in my units. And typically, you know, we're always coming across and we kind of almost keep them in inventory. If one breaks, we can go put replace it really quick. Our, our maintenance guy, he probably, I think he loves us. He, sent, he sends us a Christmas card every year because he's always replacing these things. But your, your washer and dryer is going to take a beating in this type of unit. Because if you think about it, in your house, if you got a family, you're combining the colors, right? You're combining all of the whites and, and, and all of the, you know, separating colors and all that kind of stuff. And you, you are combining loads. But in a when you're doing individual rooms, everybody's washing uh, their own version of that, right? So one day, you know, you got four people, they're all washing their their loads and doing multiple loads of laundry at any given point in time. So they are going to take a, take a beating. But again, for me, it's one of the things that I like to include because it gives me a higher price point and it gives me a longer, longer term tenants. 
The other thing that I want to talk about is cable or Wi-Fi. Should I include cable and Wi-Fi in my room in my rentals? Now, I typically don't include cable, but oftentimes I will include Wi-Fi. And one of the reasons that I'll do that is because I can usually get Wi-Fi in my area for about fifty dollars a month, which is not a lot. When I divide, when I look at it across the of across all five tenants, it's not a very high uh, price point for me. And I just kind of back that, put that back into the rent. Um, and usually what I find is that people in my market, I'm giving a comparable or better product uh, for just about the same price that they can get anywhere else. So what that does for me is I have much longer term tenants. And, and so what I find is that with Wi-Fi, folks can go and, you know, they can still do what they want to on their cell phones. Um, they, they can they can stream and all that kind of stuff, you know, and, and it's really a, a nice amenity to have uh, for tenants. So I find that it works pretty well. So just to recap, you got to get refrigerator set up. You know, you got to decide about washer dryer. Uh, you you got to decide about um, about the garbage disposal. Remember, stay away from that. And then on top of it, do you want to have cable and Wi-Fi? The other thing is that you want to make sure that you are inspecting the property regularly. If you if you have a property manager, make sure your property manager is going in there and inspecting regularly because you got a lot of people moving through these areas. And sometimes, you know, a bad one bad roommate or one bad person in a room who's not clean and whatnot, they can run everybody else off. So you want to make sure you're doing inspections. Another thing that typically comes up, one of the questions I often get is whether or not I furnish rooms. Now, I like to furnish the rooms themselves, and one of the reasons I like to do that is because of control. Now, when I first got started, one of the things we ran into, we actually had somebody bring in some old furniture, old mattresses and things like that, and there were bed bugs, right? So bed bugs are a landlord's worst, one of their worst nightmares, you know, and bed bugs can be very difficult to get, to get rid of. They can be very expensive, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to remedy. So once we got past that, we decided, hey, we are going to just furnish our rooms and what we typically supply is a mattress. Uh, we supply, uh, you know, all of the the uh, all the, the the bed itself and whatnot, and then we supply a dresser, right? So in those things, uh, we we furnish those, and we make sure with our mattresses they have like the the antimicrobial covers uh, that that are that are set up to, pr to protect against bed bugs and things like that. What that does is it gives us a lot of control over what's going on. Uh, because like I mentioned earlier, in the case of, of having bed bugs, somebody brought in really old furniture. And when they brought it in, right, they those bed bugs, they, they did their thing. And it cost us a decent amount of money. So now we just pretty much furnished a room and then we back that into the rent. So usually in the course of the first tenant's lease, they've paid for the furniture, right? So the next people after that, we'll go in and, you know, either change out the covers, do a real good inspection and turn the unit over for a new tenant. Uh, but what we find is that furnishing that really does help. Uh, with with uh, control and from a higher price point. Now, in terms of car, in terms of flooring, I try to stay away from carpet. Now, if carpet's already installed, uh, I may go ahead, go ahead forward with it if I'm per if I'm just purchased a unit and I want to start renting it out. But if the carpet needs to be replaced, I typically try not to replace carpet with new carpet. And the reason is is that carpet takes a beating. So if you're renting out individual rooms, you may have a new a new person in there every year. So a lot of folks will either in between tenants, they'll go in and they'll replace carpet or they'll pray, uh, pay for it to get professionally cleaned. And that gets kind of costly. And, and what we tend to do is we put uh, LVL flooring in our units because that's more durable. You know, once folks leave, you can mop it, you can sweep on it, you can do all those kind of things and really just clean it up without having to go in and replace carpet. What we find in our units is that when you have carpet, right, folks are going to spill stuff. Uh, they're going to track in all sorts of dirt. And over time, it becomes a really high expense. I usually try to stay from carpet, stay away from carpet in all of my units, not just my, my single room rentals. Uh, but I find that, you know, getting away from carpet is the way to go. Last thing I want to talk about is renting rooms during COVID-19. Now, the pandemic presented all sorts of challenges for all of us. And when, during this particular model, I was very concerned about COVID outbreaks throughout a rooming house because people are sharing common space. They're touching, you know, the same surfaces. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're just breathing the same air. So we went in and really, from our perspective, tried to put in some protocols for COVID-19 to keep our tenants safe. And one of the big things that we did was the common areas was that we required them to wear, tenants to wear a mask whenever they were in the common area. And we also recommended tenants, you know, try to spend as much time in their room. And what you find in single room rentals is a lot of folks kind of want to be off to themselves anyway. They're going to have their room. And, you know, sometimes the only area, only time they're really coming out is to use the bathroom, to eat, uh, to, to fix food, wash dishes and things of that nature, washing clothes. A lot of times they were kind of, you know, migrating to their individual rooms. But with COVID-19, we try to put in protocols 
uh, to make sure that folks were, were practicing social distance, make sure they were wearing masks. And our property management really had to keep tabs very closely with tenants, you know, in terms of if someone were to get sick, someone were to get sick, to report that and to let the other tenants know for their safety. Uh, so so COVID-19 did present some significant problems uh, for, for all of us. But in terms of renting out single, single rooms, we were very fortunate that those protocols understanding and trusting the science and things of that nature, they helped us to, to you know, to minimize and spread and to keep people safe. So I, I wanted to kind of go over some of these tips for you as you're setting up that, that rooming house, as you're setting it up uh, to, to receive tenants and to be successful. So I hope these have helped you. Uh, if you do have other questions, make sure you drop them in the, in the comment section. We'll do a future video, get them answered for you. Um, I, I hope this series has been a blessing to you. I hope this information has helped you. And I wish you nothing but the best as you get ready to rent your first, uh, to, to build your portfolio, to build that lasting legacy. And like I said, if, if you haven't already, like we mentioned earlier, if you haven't, make sure that you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are bringing great content to you so that you can build a great business and you can build a great legacy for your children and your children's children. This has been Marseille, the property pastor, signing off. Love you guys. Can't wait to talk to you again soon. God bless.